In the figure given below, that is this image here, the shaded area of the maxilla denotes the area of. So what we see here is that these certain areas that have been marked as a darker yellow. Okay, so these shaded areas of the maxilla are representative of deposition, resorption, endochondral ossification or none of the above. Now to understand this, we need to first understand what are the different types of growth movement that takes place in the craniofacial skeleton. So the types of growth movements can be of two types. Either they can be a drifting kind of movement or they can be displacement type of a movement. Now drifting is basically the uh, movement of the bone that is seen because of remodeling. Okay, so as bone enlarges because of apposition, there's also areas of resorption because of which the bone will remodel. So this gives it its uh, correct size, shape, structure and approximation with the adjacent bones. So whenever there is an area of apposition, okay, so this is an area of apposition. So this uh, cartoon is mimicking how bone is being laid down. So this wall is representative of bone. Okay, on one side of the wall, this man is laying down bricks. So he's uh, building the wall. So this is an area of apposition. And on one side, this man is removing the bone. So this is an area of resorption. Okay, ultimately, this bone is going to undergo remodeling. And drifting is the movement of the bone in the direction of apposition. Now, as this bone is going to be added here, okay, so more and more bone is going to be added here. Bone is going to be removed from here. Okay, this is ultimately going to lead to the bone initially if it was here, now it is going to be here. Okay, so this is how it has drifted from its adjacent position to its new position because of apposition of bone. Now, the thickness of the bone is going to be determined by the amount of apposition and resorption that is going to take place. If the amount of apposition is more than the amount of resorption, okay, then the bone is going to become thicker and move in the direction of apposition. If the amount of resorption and apposition is the same, okay, then the thickness of the bone will remain the same. It will only move in the direction of apposition. If the amount of resorption is more than the amount of apposition, then the bone is going to become thinner. Okay, so this is drifting. Now, the second type of growth movement is displacement. So, drifting was a gradual movement because of enlargement of the bone. Displacement is the actual physical movement of the bone because of growth. Now, this again can be of two types. There can be primary displacement or secondary displacement. Now, primary displacement is that situation where the bone, because of its own growth, is moving away from the adjacent bone. So, in this image here, this is an example of primary displacement. Okay, so here what we see is the nasomaxillary complex is enlarging in all the directions, okay, because of which it is moving away from the cranial base, okay. So because it is being added here, you can see the bone is being laid down at the uh, posterior aspect of the nasomaxillary complex. This is pushing the nasomaxillary complex in the downward and forward direction, okay. So here the maxilla is moving because of its own growth. In secondary displacement, what happens? is that there is movement of the bone or there is displacement of the bone because of growth in an adjacent bone or adjacent structure. So here what we see is that the cranial base is actually enlarging or growing which is pushing the maxilla out from underneath the cranial base. So the maxilla is being pushed out from, uh, from uh, underneath the cranial base. So here the pushing out of the maxilla is happening because the cranial base is growing, not because of the growth of the nasomaxillary complex itself. Okay. So if the growth is within the bone, because which is causing its movement, its primary displacement. If the growth is in the adjacent bone, which is growing, which is bringing about a change or a movement in the uh, in an adjacent bone, that is secondary displacement. So now both these types of displacements take place in the nasomaxillary complex, which causes a net result of a downward and forward growth of the maxilla. Okay, now because there is a downward and forward growth of the maxilla, it would appear that this area, okay, where this, uh, the shaded area, okay, it might appear that this is an area of deposition or an ap area of apposition. But this is not true. Rather, this is a contradictory or a co concept that is uh, slightly uh, different 
that is although the maxilla is moving downward and forward this area is actually an area of resorption okay so although the maxilla is moving in a downward and forward direction the anterior surface of the maxilla is resorptive so this is similar to this cartoon okay that is the maxilla is considered to be uh, on a wheel okay which is being translated downwards and forwards because of growth of itself and adjacent structure so it is being displaced okay so this uh, maxilla it is on a platform okay the platform is being rolled on the wheels in a downward and forward direction so it is being displaced in this direction however because of the remodeling this anterior surface is a surface of uh, resorption and the posterior surface is a surface of deposition okay so this is how the growth of the maxilla takes place in simple terms so although this seems like a paradox this is slightly different so it is not necessary that the remodeling changes are always additive for example they should always be in the direction of the translation sometimes they can also oppose so in the maxilla the movement of the drifting is in the opposite direction to the displacement this is unique to the maxilla okay so the anterior surface is actually resorptive so in this image where we have been shown the shaded area so this is the area of resorption